Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it's the answers to section 5.3 in our textbook on adding and subtracting polynomials. We started at question five, which says, which addition statement does the model, uh, di does the diagram model? So we have to know that these are negative x squared tiles, and these are x tiles. So when we think of that, this, this expression up here is going to be negative 2x squared plus 3x. And we are going to add to it or combine it with this x squared, this x squared, this x squared, this negative x. We're going to add it to 3x squared and a negative x, which we're going to represent by a minus x. Scan the horizon for which one that is. The answer, therefore, is C. The second question says add the polynomial, so it does not say model it, which is great. So in the first term, we have x's. Look for the other ones here. X is there. They're going to combine. Keep your term. Add your coefficients. You get 5x. A negative 4 and a negative 3 make a negative 7. We're going to have 5x minus 7. In the second question, a negative, x, negative a squared combines with a negative 4a squared. Keep your a squared. What's a negative 1 and a negative 4 going to make? A negative 5. That term is collected. Your 3a, or negative 3a added to your positive 2a, is going to make a negative 1a, which we're not going to write a coefficient of negative 1. We're just going to keep it as negative a. And finally, your positive 2 constant does not combine with anything else, so we're just going to leave it as positive 2. 5p and 5p make 10p. Positive 5 and negative, P, uh, negative 5 make 0. So that binomial added to that binomial makes a monomial or a single term of 10p. 10 pence in England can get you a nice uh, chocolate bar. Some candy from the candy store. Finally, our last one, our y squares. There are no other y squares, which means it's going to stand alone as... 2y squared. Now, believe it or not, I'm not going to gather my constant next. That's not what I'm going to do. I'm going to go over here and gather my y's next because it's the highest degree term left to gather. It's going to be a positive 6y. And now I'm going to give you a negative 15 and a positive 9 to make a negative 6 constant when gathered. Any questions on that? Question seven, perform the indicated operation, sorry, by combining like terms. Combining your x's first was going to make 3x. Your plus 4 stands alone, so we're going to keep that as your uh, constant. 3n and negative 4n make a negative 1n, which we're going to represent, which is negative n. A negative 4 and a positive 7 make a positive 3, so it's a negative n plus 3. 2b squared and negative b squared make 1b squared, which we're going to leave without the coefficient of 1. And a negative 3 and a positive 2 make a negative 1, a constant of negative 1. And finally, your last one, 5a squared, negative 4a squared, make a 1a squared or just a squared. A negative 3a and a positive 2a make a negative 1a or just negative a. And finally, a positive 2 and a negative 3 make a negative 1 for a constant of negative 1. If you want to bring a highlighter to your test and you like doing it kind of like I do, just shade in the whole thing, it makes it easier sometimes if you do bring three different color highlighters. But you probably don't need them the more you practice. Question 8, what is the opposite of the expression? Express your answer using both diagrams and symbols. So we'll start with making our symbols. Since the first one's shaded in, the next one will not be. What does this picture say? It's negative 3x plus 1, which is the opposite of that. The opposite of this picture would be a solid x squared, two negative x's, and negative 3, which will be x squared minus 2x minus 3. Question 10, what's the opposite of each expression? You can't get anything easier. A negative 9x is a positive 9x. Now remember, on a number line, if we think about 0, 9 times a number, it's 
opposite would be the opposite of 9 times the number, which is negative 9x. Remember, this is not the same thing as is not equal to. Oh, that's not right. That's <laughs> exponents. Uh, I had a brain fart. Forget I said that. Uh, 5d minus 6, the opposite will be, the opposite is negative 5d minus 6. And the opposite of this will be a positive 2x squared, a negative 3x, and a positive 5. Question 12, uh, which of the following expressions is the opposite of 2x squared minus x? Well, from initially, we would say, okay, this is the opposite of this, that works. But this is the same as that, so this is not the opposite. This is a negative x squared. This is a negative x squared. This is a positive x. This would be negative 2x squared plus x, which is the opposite of, and we can stop right there. That is the opposite. Dry diagram to model the situation. Negative 3x squared will be three of these. Positive 4x's will be these four here. Minus uh, 2x squared minus 6. So we're going to take my red box, put it like that, and now I'm going to remove from it 2x squared. I can do that without putting any zeros in. Can I remove, can I remove a negative x? No. So in order for me to remove a negative x, I actually have to make a zero pair. And from that, removing a negative x is actually going to increase the value of that. When I remove an x, it actually increases it by a positive x. So my final answer will be negative 1x squared plus 5x. Question 14, uh, simplify by combining like terms. I am simply going to say, okay, keep the first expression. Change to addition and use the opposite of the second. I'm going to do all of these first right away. Keep the first expression. And add the opposite. So negative 2b squared minus 4b. This one here will be keep the first expression minus or plus the opposite, which will be a positive 2 plus 3w. Keep the first, change to addition, and use the opposite of the second expression. Once we have that, we're just going to gather like terms. So 2x and negative 5x. We'll make a negative 3x. A negative 3 and a positive 1 make a negative 2. So your answer for A is this. For B, we have negative 3B, sorry, oh, uh oh, close program, negative 3B squared and a negative 2B squared, which will make a negative 5B squared. We have a negative 5B and a negative 4B, which is going to make a negative 9B. C. We're going to have the first terms I gather is not my constant. I'm going to gather my highest degree terms first. Those two will make a negative 3b. And this one and this one are going to make a 7 or a plus. Oops, it's a highlighter. A plus 7. And finally, d. M and negative m. Oh, sorry, that's not right. What's the first one I'm going to gather in this one? My m squared, so I'm really going over here and putting this one first, negative m squared. Then this one, plus m. Ah, heavens to Betsy. And finally, gathering my, co my constants, a negative 7 and a positive 7 make 0. So I'm left with negative m squared minus m. Do we have to do 15? Go 16. So it says a triangle has the dimension showed. What does, and I'll highlight in green, what does this plus this plus this really represent? Take it. It represents the perimeter. It's this plus this plus this, which is called the perimeter, the perimeter, the perimeter of a triangle, the perimeter of the triangle. 
simplify the expression. So I'm going to gather my x terms first. So x plus 3x plus 2x is 6x. Negative 3 and negative 2 and positive 5 make 0. So when I simplify this plus this plus this, I get 6x. When I go this plus this plus this, I get 0. So the perimeter, the perimeter of this triangle is equal to 6x. P equals 6x. And finally, if x has a value of 5, what is the perimeter of the triangle? So I could do it one of two ways. If x is, let me just erase this all here. If x is 5, then I could substitute it into here. So if p equals 6x, then 6 times 5 means the perimeter is equal to 30 units, or 30 meters, or 30 kilometers, or 30 centimeters, whatever it happens to be the perimeter. If I go back into the actual thing, if x is equal to 5, if x is 5, how long is that side length? 2. Everyone agree? Because it would be 5 minus 3, which is 2. How long is this side length if x is equal to 5? 13, because 3 times 5, right, substitute 3 times 5 minus 2 would be 15 minus 2, which is 13. And if x is equal to 5, what's the length of that? 15. 2 times 5 plus 5, which is 15. And what's 2 plus 13 plus 15? 30. So either way you did it, you could have substituted it into your original side length, x equals 5, got your actual side length and added it, or you could have combined the three algebraic side lengths, created an algebraic expression where, which represents the sum of those, and quite easily just substituted one time x into 5 and still got your answer of 30. Okay. Question 17, we have our addition pyramid. So it's made up of the ones below will always add up to be the brick above. So Jack did a great job yesterday on this. He knew that this was 3x plus 2. He knew that, if I move this one over here, this one will be uh, 4x plus 1. And if I move it over here, he knew this was going to be 4x even because the plus 2 and the minus 2 make nothing. Moving up the pyramid, if I look at the, oh, sorry. If I look at these two here, those sum is going to be 7x plus 3. And if I move this over here, oh, not that one. This here. The one above that is going to be 8x plus 1. And finally, finally, when I look at this one, my top one is going to be 15x plus 4 as a top break. Okay. Everyone's good on that? Easy peasy lemon squeezy. That question appears on your test. Different polynomials, obviously, but something like that will appear on your test. Question 18 is your story problem. This is in Langley, British Columbia, which interestingly enough is just outside the city I grew up in, which is Maple Ridge. My mother and father uh, met in jail working in the, in the prison in Langley. They met in prison. They both, they both worked there. They weren't inmates. Come on now. What are you thinking? Uh, it says you can rent a backhoe for $399 a day. And I'll highlight that in something. And you can rent a bulldozer for $550 a day. Okay, the, bull, the bulldozer. And it costs $160 round trip to move each piece of equipment back and forth to jobs. If that's going to be what we were going to call our constant. So if we call, it says write an expression. Question A says, write an expression for the total cost of the backhoe before tax. Okay, and then it says for B, write an expression for the total cost of rating uh, the bulldozer. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to call X the number of days, and you could use D. D would be an acceptable variable, or N for number of days. But since we're used to seeing X, X just represents the number of days you rent it for. So for the bull, for the backhoe, Multiplying the number of days by 399, or that expression right there, is going to be the cost of renting the backhoe for X number of days. So if you rent it for two days, you would multiply the 399 by two, and you would see how that would represent the cost. But in addition to that, that backhoe also has to have 
$160 uh, service fee for delivery fee added on to however many days. So if you rent it for 10 days, you don't have to pr uh, pay 160 times 10. You just need to pay the 160 for delivery and pickup. For the bulldozer, it's a little bit more expensive. It's 550 a day, so 550 multiplied by the number of days plus 160 will represent the cost of the bulldozer. Question C says, what is the expression for the cost of renting both? So the backhoe plus the bulldozer will represent both, or 399x plus 160 brackets plus 550x plus 160. So this algebraic expression, the sum of two binomials, represents the total cost for both. And if we add those together, if we add those together, we can gather like terms. This term and this term can be added together to make, uh, what would that be for? 949. 949x plus, combine my constants of 160 and 160, the delivery fee for both will be 320. And therefore, the expression that represents both will be that. It also says, what's the expression for the difference between the both? So the one we have most is 550x plus 160. The difference being subtraction, subtracting it from the 399x plus 160. That will be the difference in price between the cost of the more expensive one, the bulldozer, and the cheaper one, the backhoe. When we gather like terms here, I'm going to change it to the opposite of each. Right, add the opposite, because instead of subtracting polynomials, we're going to add the opposite. When I gather like terms now, this and this is going to make 151, 151 x. And this and this are going to cancel each other out. So therefore, the difference in cost of renting the bulldozer versus the backhoe is $151 a day more to rent the bulldozer than the backhoe. Yeah, yeah, well, if you rent it for two days, it's only $302 difference. The bulldozer probably is going to cost you $350,000. True. And the last one says, consider the addition pyramid before. So if I take my green highlighter, A plus this green light had to equal this, correct? Now let's think of an easier one first. Let's think of just numbers. So if we think of it in easier terms, let's just put this as a blank. Let's put this as a 4, and let's put this as a 7, okay? We're going to use regular numbers, not algebraic expressions. What is this number here? We all know that that number is 3, correct? Now, what could I have done to 7 and 4 to get 3? I could have subtracted. This, take away this, gave me this. So that same logic applies algebraically. This, take away this, gives me this. Do you agree? Okay. So let's think about how we're going to approach that then. We're going to erase this now. We don't need that. Keep, flip, change. And when I change this one, I'm going to make it into negative 4x plus 3, correct? Okay. Gather like terms. Negative x and negative 4x is negative 5x. Positive 5 and positive 3 is positive 8. So therefore, this must be negative 5x plus 8. And it works because you can now add it and, and see that it does work out. Okay. So that same logic for the next one. If I use a simpler drawing, uh, let's make this 3 and 5. What would this one be here? 2. So this take away this gave me this. Or this take away this. gives me B. Agreed? Keep, flip, change. Keep, flip, change. What's my first term of B going to be? 
Avery, what will the first term of this be? If I combine this term and this term, what's my first term of B? Hayden. Negative X. Good stuff. And what about this term combined with this term? Avery, what will that be? 4. So therefore, B is negative X plus 4. And again, if I reversed it, negative or 4X plus negative X is 3X, negative 3 and 4 is 1. And now it's really easy to do C. I just have to add them. What's C going to be? 2X, when I combine those two, plus 6.